Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Robbie the Painter here. So excited that you're here. Thank you so much for, for just stopping and checking out the videos. Hit the like button if you like what you're seeing. I've got a few new subscribers. Slowly but surely, we're building the channel. Thank you so much for that. We're gonna continue on the beginner series. And I think today's painting, we're gonna take that, that idea of the sky and the trees that we did in the last episode, and we're gonna put some land in there. We're gonna keep adding. If you've never done any painting or you think, you know, Rob, I can't do that, I wanna show you that you can. And we're gonna do some simple paintings on this beginner series and uh, get you painting. So if you go out and get some supplies and that, you can come back and paint along with me. But uh, here's the colors we've got going today. We're only gonna use a few colors. We're gonna do another simple painting. And, and like I said, kind of add on to that idea of the first uh, episode where we did a sky and, and trees. I'm gonna add a little background in and, and uh, this should get fun. This should be fun for you if you've never painted. I'm gonna be using uh, odorless mineral spirits, not only to wash the brushes, but I take my paintbrush and I dip in there as a medium to thin these paints out. You know, if we put the, the paint right out of the tube up there on the canvas, it's not gonna move very well at all. I'm also using only a few uh, brushes. I've got a fan brush and a couple other uh, flat brushes and then like a liner brush. And I think that's all we're gonna use. So if you have those, get them ready. And I have a one inch brush too. And I think we're gonna start with the one inch brush. You could use a two inch brush if you've got a you know, Bob Ross set and you, and you wanna use your two inch brush, you could use that. I'm gonna grab the one inch brush. Let's put some sky in. Remember on the, on the last episode, we talked about, we're gonna put the sky on first, our tree doesn't go on, and then the sky behind it. Now I know some painters can do it that way where they can put it in the foreground and then add the sky behind it. But I think for this beginner series, it's gonna be a little bit easier if we go the farthest thing back and then work forward on the painting. And that's, uh, at least that's my, my idea in theory. Let's dip in to a little bit of mineral spirits or odorless paint thinner. Let's come up here to the Prussian blue. And we're just, I'm just pulling some of this blue down and out. You wanna make sure you shake your brush off when you dip into the uh, uh, paint thinner or mineral spirits. You don't want the mineral spirits dripping off your brush. If it's too wet, our paint's gonna just run right off the canvas and you don't want that. So we're gonna come up here with the Prussian blue and we're gonna make a nice little sky. We're just gonna put a little bit of blue over here, maybe in this corner. And on your painting, you know, you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. You, there is no wrong way to put a sky in or to do a painting. It's your canvas, it's your paints. And, and you can do it any way you want, but we're gonna learn how to do a simple sky here. And, and we get lighter in reality, nine times out of 10, if you walk outside during the daytime, if you look up in the sky, the highest points in the sky are gonna be darker as you start looking down at the horizon, and you can test this, um, just go outside and look. The closer you get down to the mountains and the, the horizon, the sky gets lighter, almost always, almost always. So I started up here at the top with the Prussian blue, and I started coming down, and now there's less paint, you know, the paint's almost gone, so it's getting lighter and lighter down here. So we automatically get that, that horizon that we want. I'm just gonna go back and forth here. Just back and forth. Again, we're doing a simple sky. I don't know that we're putting any clouds in yet. We will get to clouds. Maybe, maybe we'll do a couple clouds here. Um, we almost have clouds here. By leaving spaces in your sky, you can, you can get clouds in those lighter areas. So by putting blue here and a little over here and a little down here and a little down here, you're leaving those, those open areas where you can put some clouds and that. If you put blue over the whole thing, you could go back and put clouds over there, over that blue, but it mixes and, and makes it a little more difficult 
uh, to get the clouds in there and, and maybe to look right. So I may have gotten a little too much mineral spirits. My paint is running just a little bit, not too bad, but a little. I'll just come down here. I'm just wiping off the brush at the bottom. Our sky is not going to come down this far, but I'm just kind of wiping the brush off. Let's grab a paper towel and let's come up here and let's, on these white areas, I'm just going to rub some of this blue off a little bit. I said I didn't think we were going to put a cloud in, but you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. So we're just rubbed a little bit of the paint off, made a little white area there. Let's grab a smaller brush. Let's, you know what, we can use the fan brush. Little tiny bit of thinner on your brush, little tiny bit, and then go into your titanium white. We're gonna come up here, we're just gonna do some, some circles. We're not being precise about anything. Again, beginner series, we're just, actually intermediate series, advanced, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna swirl on some clouds. You can do this, anybody can do this. I'm making little circles, grab some more paint. There we go, grab some more. Yeah, this fan brush. This is not a Bob Ross fan brush. I like this fan brush. It's very uh, soft and flexible. The Bob Ross fan brushes are a little stiffer. And those Bob Ross brushes are good for doing clouds. This one's kind of bending a little too much, but you know what, I'm making it work. All right, just little circles in this white area we, we created. And then maybe I swirl it out here and twist it. Let's take that one inch brush. Let's wash it off a little bit, get that blue off of it. If you have a two inch brush, you could use that. We're gonna do a little blending, very lightly, very lightly. Get all that thinner off there. We're gonna come underneath the bottom of these clouds. Let's not touch the top of the cloud yet. Let's come underneath in just little tiny circles underneath these clouds. Same down here, little circles. We're just pulling some of this white down into this blue and making these clouds a little more wispy. You could, you could take your brush and pull down like this. That would work. Again, there's no right or wrong way. We just want some wispy looking clouds. And very lightly, I'm gonna come across the whole thing. And when I say lightly, we're just barely laying this, this brush on here. Okay, stand back and look at what you have. We have some clouds. Simple sky. We put some blue on, left some light areas, filled those light areas in with titanium white, fluffed them up a little bit, went across very lightly, and we have a sky. The first episode, we did the simple sky, and we just did trees. But we didn't really put any land in there. So if we're going on a... In our paintings on this series, we're gonna go from the farthest thing back and work our way forward. So if the sky is the farthest thing back, which it is, you know, the next thing, we might put some land in there, some, you know, a horizon. So let's put a horizon in. Let me use a flat brush. I've got this one, it's like a half inch uh, flat brush. It's one of my Christmas presents from my daughter, Vicki. Again, thank you, Vicki. Let's dip into a little bit of thinner. Let's grab some sap green. Here's another thing that I want to tell you guys about. The farther something is away from your eye, the lighter in color it is, okay? It gives the idea of depth and, and distance. So if we're going to do 
a horizon. And I'll show you. Let's just go straight sap green uh, for right now. We're going to make a horizon. We're going to say it's uh, right, right there. I could grab my bigger flat brush, get a little farther. Okay, we have a horizon line. We didn't use a ruler. We're not worried, you know, about how straight it is. We're, we're making it fairly straight. The only time we'd probably use a ruler is if we're doing an ocean or, or water and that we want that to be level. Now, if things are lighter when they're farther away, I would come in to this Indian yellow that we've got here and I would come on the very top of this horizon and come across. Let's grab a little more. And we're just lightening up that horizon just a little bit. The other thing you can do, I mean, that's a pretty color right there. That's, that's a nice horizon. Okay, there we've got our horizon. A little bit of green, a little bit of Indian yellow, and I think I'm gonna grab my bigger flat brush here, go into some more Indian yellow. If things are lighter farther back, I don't want this green to be too dark. Should look lighter. That'll give us the that depth and distance. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Just a couple colors, sap green we put on there, um, and, and then some Indian yellow. And we've got these cool colors going on. Okay, so there's a horizon. And let's bring some of this Indian yellow down just a, f a little bit farther. Again, this is gonna be a simple sky, land, tree. You guys with me so far? Yeah? All right. You know what? I think we're going to keep coming down with this, this color. So dip into a little more thinner. Let's grab some of that green and a little tiny bit of the midnight black. If things are lighter farther away, they get darker as they get closer. So in theory, we would want this, this land here to, to get darker all the way down here. That's what we would want. I am gonna mix in a little bit of Indian yellow. You guys mix up. You can go back and forth between the colors and, uh, and try different things. But I'm gonna be using the sap green and the Indian yellow. We'll see what looks good. I'm just gonna scrub this in. We just wanna get color on the canvas at this point. We're doing sky, land, and some trees. In the last episode, all we did was the sky and the trees. So we're adding land in to your painting now. Grabbing a little bit of green, grabbing a little bit of Indian yellow, kind of mixing it. I'm mixing it on the brush. Let me get in a little close, oh, right there. Indian yellow over on this side, sap green. I'm grabbing a little of the Indian yellow. I'm coming over here into the green and I've got two different colors on, on the brush and I'm not mixing them up that much. And then just scrubbing it on the canvas. All right, go back and forth. There, we've got some land. You might be saying, well, that looks okay, Rob, but outside my house, we've got hills. It's not just flat. Okay, what if you wanted to do that? We're gonna make some different planes. We're gonna, let's push this horizon back into the painting. Let's grab some sap green, a little bit of midnight black. And again, I'm mixing it on the brush. We'll see if the color is too dark or too light. We've got a flat horizon. Let's make a hill. So we start up here. 
and we come down like this. And we just bring that paint down. Like that. Grab some more green, some more black. Let's come up here. Let's fill this hill in. All right, stand back. There, we just brought something forward. This hill is, is coming in forward. Let's go more into the black, mostly black. Let's come over on this side. Let's come up here like this, and we're gonna put in another hill. More black because we're getting darker as we get closer. We could lighten up this horizon, this first line here, go really light, a little darker here, a little darker here, and you can put as many plains and hills in as you want. But this is a simple way to kind of show you how you create depth, distance, and put some land in to your painting. All right, grab a little more green, a little more black, it's coming here. Just fill some of this in. Doesn't all have to be filled in. We want these different colors happening uh, within our painting. We've got a little valley going on here. If I darken this, this last hill we put in right here at the, at the top, we darken in this edge, it'll really make this valley, this yellow, stand out. So I'm grabbing black. just adding in some black here to really define this, the top of this hill that we just put in. And it really makes this yellow now, we just made that really pop. So there's, there's some sort of valley going on. You with me? Again, we're doing something simple. Sky, some land, let's put some trees in. We will, as this series goes on, I'm gonna show you lighting, shading, we're going to change the color of the hills. We'll might even put some people down there or something like that. So, but we're, we're going to stick with this beginner series and, and keep it simple so you guys can get started. Get a paintbrush in your hand, get some paint. You guys can do a sky, some hills, and put some trees in and have it look good. Let's switch brushes. If you have a small uh, round brush, or small flat brush, we're gonna put some trees in. Now, we were talking about distance. What if we wanna put some trees in in the distance? They have to be small. We're not gonna have giant trees way off in the distance. The trees are gonna look smaller and they're gonna be lighter in color. We're gonna grab a little bit of green and I'm not dipping into any mineral spirits yet. I'm, I'm thinking I can put this paint on just straight like this. Let's mix in some green and some of this uh, Indian yellow. Just lighten that green up. We're gonna start over here on the left side of our horizon, and we're just gonna come up here, and we're gonna put lines like that, okay? And we're gonna do a short one next to it, and a little taller one next to it, and a shorter one, and taller, and shorter, and taller, and shorter. And we're just, and we can leave a little space. Let's, let's move over an inch or inch and a half. And let's start again. And we're going up and down and up and down to give, we're just making the indication. You might be saying, Rob, those don't look like trees. There you are. You may say those don't look like trees. They do from a distance. The farther you are away from something, the less detail it has, the lighter it gets. And, and you've just given that, that indication. Sorry about the ring light in my eyes. Um, but we're just given the indication that, that those, those are trees. And then I'm just 
kind of move my brush back and forth underneath to kind of change the ground a little bit. All right, you with me so far on that? We can put a few more in and grab some more Indian yellow. A little bit of green. And we can make even smaller ones. Maybe, maybe these go way back in the distance. The, the smaller you get, the farther away it looks. So you can barely make little, just little marks on the canvas here, on this horizon line. If you want just the indication that there's far away trees. Something going on way, way back there. You got your fan brush. I'm using one of these uh, softer fan brushes. Now we're gonna go a little bit darker. So let's grab the sap green. And I'm gonna try this with, without any medium, without any uh, uh, thinner on it. We'll see if that works. All right, let's come over here on this side. And we're gonna hold our fan brush vertical. Okay, bristles are straight up and down. And we're just gonna touch. We're gonna make some marks is what we're doing. We're gonna touch and tap. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with on, on this distant tree line where we go up and down with our brush. We're gonna do that here, okay? So we touch here and then we drop down and move over and shorter and up and down and up and down and up and down. Grab a little more paint. You see how it's, we started out dark and it gets lighter. I know you guys probably already know that, but it means you're running out of paint and it's okay to have lighter trees. You want different colors. You want darker, lighter, darker, lighter. So I just grab some more, see how that's darker again. Down, up, down, up, down. You can do as many of these as you want, or as few. And then we turn, you can turn your brush, your fan brush sideways, like this, horizontal, and just touch like this, and you get some cool effects. Kind of looks like little grass or bushes, like that. Okay, you guys with me so far on that? We just made an, a closer tree line, a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. Now we're gonna fix this ground because as we were tapping, our hill kinda, kinda got those tap marks in it. Let's take another brush, or you could use your fan brush, very lightly underneath and just pull that through like that, very lightly. We're gonna put some trees over on this side here, and we're gonna make them a little darker than, than these here, as things get closer. So let's grab our sap green, and we're going into midnight black. And you can go heavier on the black side than the green. We can always lighten things up. And we're gonna come up here on this left side, and we're gonna put, we're gonna put a mark at the top. Actually, let's go ahead and draw the trunk all the way down. Let's say our tree is there. And we put a little, little foot on him, okay? You guys with me so far on that? Grab some more paint, and we put a little mark and we touch, and we touch, and we touch, left, then right. Now we're gonna start tapping, and we're gonna continue tapping. And if we run out of paint, we're gonna stop, grab some paint, and go back to tapping. So let me load up my brush, a little bit of green, a little bit of black, to the left, and then down and to the right, down to the left, down to the right. That's our, our pattern. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If your tree doesn't turn out like this, that's okay. Yours might turn out better than mine. I'm hoping. That would make me smile. 
you guys, you know, that's the whole idea of me teaching you is you guys send me pictures of what you're doing and I can go, wow, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. All right. There's a tree. When we stand back and we look at it, um, this is a little too uniform with the zigzag, but it's okay. You know what? You want your trees to be kind of random looking. You don't want it to look like a computer or AI did it and it's a machine, but uh, that's not too bad. It's a, it's a darker tree, it's closer. We're giving that idea of depth and distance to uh, the painting. And that's, that's the whole idea here. I'm gonna switch brushes back to my, my flat brush. I think I can do the trees with flat brush. Grab some green, grab some black. Well, let's draw another tree right next to this one. Come down, make a mark, cross the center, or you could do it on the left side, or you could do it on the right side, but we want a little mark at the top. Your top branches, again, if you remember from the first episode, we want them smaller at the top, and then we get wider as we go down. That tree has that, that triangle or pyramid shape. It gets wider at the bottom. Most trees, I mean, depends on what kind of a tree, but these, these pine trees, these evergreens get wider. So I'm tapping to the right, back to the left, sometimes down. Here's where the randomness comes in back and forth. Grab some more paint. You'll have to dip into your paint quite often. There we go. There's another tree. Maybe we've got a little one back here. All right, we just got a little one and leave a space sometimes. You know, trees have a rough life sometimes. They're missing branches or they've got a twig for a branch. So drop down and leave a little space on some of these. They can be, you know, they can be crooked too. Not every tree is, is straight here. Let's come over to this side. We're gonna go right through our cloud And we're going to come down and turn. Oh, wow. Yeah, this guy's had a really rough life. He's just all twisted and turned and there we go. It's a cool looking tree. All right, let's put some branches on it. And I'm going left, and I'm going right. And this flat brush is not like a fan brush, so it doesn't give me the same type of texture. And I, it's okay. I, I kind of like this. Kind of like this. But I'm just tapping. And going left and right and Grab some green, grab some black. If you do a branch and it doesn't look dark enough or you're losing paint, just grab some darker paint and go right over it again. And make it darker. Nothing is ever set in stone when you put it on the canvas. If you step back and you go, oh, I don't like that. I wish it was darker. Make it darker. Oh, I don't like that. It, that branch isn't big enough or it's too big. Well, change it, fix it, you can. Make it bigger, make it darker. Dipping into the green. Put some black on that. Yeah, fan brush would have made this a lot quicker. <laughs> but I wanted to try my flat brush. I wanted to try my flat brush. Just to show you, it, 
it doesn't matter. You could, you know, you could take your socks off and paint with your toes and you could probably do some of this. There's a will, there's a way. And we're just gonna just grab some green, put some green on that big old branch here at the bottom. All right, we stand back, we have a tree. Usually there's some shadows in that underneath trees. So we could take some of this midnight black that we have and we could come under here and put some, some shadows. And how do we know which direction to put the shadows? Well, if the sun, we don't know where the sun is, but let's say the brightest spot is straight ahead and it's coming straight at us, then we put our shadows straight back. So that tree would have a shadow that looks like that. These two trees, their shadow would come straight back. And again, it's wider here. And as the trees get smaller at the top and we come down here to their tops, we get smaller. And we can just indicate that it doesn't have to be precise. We don't have to make that shadow look exactly like the tree. We don't have to do every branch. Don't worry about that. And then we just take and just kind of feather that in like that. This one, same thing. If the sun's straight ahead, it would be darkest right here underneath it. Right. Right there. And let's take that, that foot out right here. We'll put a shadow under it. There we go. Shadow under the tree, shadow under this tree, shadow. So we just did some shading, some shadows. I think we're gonna stop for this uh, episode of the beginner series. Don't know what I'm calling this yet, but I, I think it's gonna be sky, land, and tree. We're just adding one more element. Each, each episode of the beginner series, I wanna bring something new in. Um, so the very first one, I showed you how to do a sky and, and a couple different trees. This time we put in the land, and I, and I told you about the farther away things are, the lighter they are, they get darker as they get come forward. So we, we worked on that right here. And we put a couple of big trees in here that are darker. You notice these trees here are darker than these and much darker than those. And that gives the impression that things are farther away. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. I think this is number two of the beginner series. Did some sky, some land, and some trees. Join me on the next episode. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.